Hi friends, today I thought we would play with this fun little thistle. On my hikes, I'm noticing these are starting to pop up and I just, I love them. I think they are so pretty, so fun and relatively easy to paint. So I thought they might be a fun tutorial. The biggest challenge is I think creating these little uh, feathery leaves. Um, and that's really about it. So go ahead and pull out your uh, 140 pound paper. Um, I've got my two containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse. And I'm going to be using both my Princeton number eight round. And I'm going to, unfortunately, I don't have a Princeton angle brush. So I'm going to use, I've had this one for quite some time. This is a Robert Simmons. Um, it's a half inch angle brush. I'm hoping the uh, tip on that is good. And then I've also just got this low Cornell um, little angle brush. It's a little bit thinner. So those are the brushes I'll be playing with today. Uh, I'm going to be using Violet Purple and I'll probably add in some of my Quinn Magenta and then of course my Sap and Olive green watercolors that I use predominantly. So I think this will be fun. Um, so let's get started. I have already sprayed my paints with my water to get them activated and um, I have some pictures here that I've put up of some of these fun little thistles that I took out um, on my hikes and walks and so I think we're all ready and again, I'm, I'm always telling you, uh, you know, give these your twist, um, give these your unique style, and um, just have fun with the paints. So I'm putting some of this violet purple here on my palette, my palette, the same one I've been using uh, from Mist Ceramics. I'm also going to go into my greens and I mix my sap green and my olive green so that I get kind of a unique color combination. I like doing that. I don't always like using the color right out of the tube. I'm also going to add some green gold here which i really like that color and these are all windsor newton now the color that i found lately which is really interesting that i'm enjoying quite a bit is this um kind of a dark green but it it seems to have a little blue in it and it's called sennelier green uh that's actually the make sennelier it's um I'm kind of liking that and I hadn't used that for quite some time. So those are the green. I will also add into my green um, a tiny bit of Prussian blue. I think that's really pretty with the green. So I will use that as well. And I think that's all of them. Um, Quinn Magenta, I may use a little bit of that in the actual bud and flower. And I think I'm ready here. I've got all my colors and um, let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do first, we're using thin strokes first to create the stems. And then I'm going to use my angle brush for these little uh, kind of pokey, frilly um, leaves that have some spikes. I'm also gonna use that maybe around uh, this bulb part of um, this thistle, I think is, is uh, going to work really well. And it's also got these little sepals that come out. Um, so let's start with, I think I wanna start 
with the purple um, pieces that are coming out. So let's get our, um, let's start with our round brush. And I'm just going to go in, I'm going to use that rule of thirds, that comp, uh, composition piece. So I'm gonna have a thistle coming out here and maybe here, and then maybe a little bud here, okay? So let's start with um, the little purple kind of spiky pieces that come out, which is so recognizable and one of the reasons I love this little flower. I see them on my walk every year and they're so fun. They just started coming out around here. Okay, let me grab a paper towel one second. There we go to kind of blot my brush off of any excess water. So I've got that here. And then let's just go ahead and start. So really this, this angle brush makes it very easy to create these little lines. Now what I will do is once this kind of dries, I'm very lightly pressing on it. I'm just going to go in and create darker and darker colors. Uh, let's go in. I wanna dab off just a tiny bit of that water. And now I add to this. I don't even really know if these thistles have this kind of Quinn magenta. Most of ours are more of a bluey, purpley color. But you know what? I, I like um, creating some really pretty colors in mine. Now, while this is drying, I'm going to go into this area and start creating kind of with the side of my brush, I'm getting that um, round, wide stroke here, okay? And what I noticed is these have somewhat of a pretty thick stock on them. So I'm going to make that kind of thick. I might go in, dab in some of my deeper green here and just let that come down. I, as you know, I love working the wet on wet. I think I'll add in here some of that purple. I think that is so beautiful okay so really i mean in minutes here we've created something pretty spectacular and beautiful let's um go in once that dries and i'm just going to do some darker value uh, leaves in there i think i also want to go in here and just add some of these little what they call sepals now you could actually use um, your angle brush for this. You could use this tiny brush, the, um, the very tip, very light point. Make sure before you start these, you warm up. I have a warm up. I can actually link. Um, I think it's very beneficial just to get that feel. And so there you go. There's kind of that first one. We're gonna go back into that and add some other pieces. I think I wanna add some darker values to create that interest. But I have also tapped into this green, a little bit of that purple. And I think that's really, really pretty and adds in a lot. There we go. So let's go to our second one here. You could even, you know, creating those white spaces, you could even go in and just dab out a little if you wanted. So let's go in here and create um, another little thistle here. So going into my violet purple, might even dab into that or that, just mix those colors. And let's just start 
adding more. Okay, I'm just using very light pressure, the side of my angle brush, and it, it pretty much does this for you. Now I want to have a little bit more purple in there. So I'm going to go in and add some of that in. Now while this is wet, I'm going to create that green in here because I want it to spread a little. So I just go back to my eight round, go into the green here always remembering to work light to dark. So going in with my lighter base, we can always darken it up. And I want to go in a little bit wet on wet here because I want this to spread to this purple. That's okay with me. And let's do that thicker stalk stem here, just like that, okay? Might even go in, do a little bit of that. And I'm going to add some of that purple because I think that creates some real fun interest. Now, this is pretty dry, so let's go into that with a darker value of, uh, let's use the Quinn Magenta. And to get that darker value, it's gonna create that depth. To get the darker value, you wanna use more paint less water so the value will be different so let's just go in start creating some of these using the side of my brush i'm going to go in and add some of that purple as well so we're building starting out with a lighter value we can always build up so i'm going in creating some of these and look at how interesting that is. Maybe tapping in just a tiny bit in here. And that really creates this depth in here. I'll make this into that um, fun little kit for you too. So I'll have a value sheet with brush strokes. Also, I'll have this original little painting you're watching me paint. And then we'll also have um, a color swatch. So let's go into this one and just add a tiny bit to it. Some darker values using the side of my brush, like so. Look how pretty that is. Again, these, these would really make some pretty little springtime cards. There we go. I love them really extra spiky. At the same time, I'm leaving, I'm very aware of leaving these white spaces here and there, okay? Because that creates some interest. I'm going to tap in a little bit right there. Just create some white space there too. I might want to tap in there. There we go. Isn't that fun? That's a really fun way to create that, um, white space without um, having to think about leaving the white space. The blotting will create a lighter space and that creates a lot of interest. So let's go into our last one here and I think I'll make this one a little bud. So let's create this um, green part first. Let's go into our green paint here, always starting with a lighter value, meaning a little bit more water. We can always darken, so I keep it like a T consistency. And let's just go in and create this little um, pod. I'm gonna make this one a little bit rounder and then create this coming out here. Okay, I'm going in with a little bit of that darker green, wet on wet, like this. And then I'm gonna go into this little bud 
I want to do this while it's wet so I get a beautiful little blending. Okay, so let's just create this little bud. I noticed the ones I saw, they kind of did this. Notice I'm leaving some of that white space. So I think that's kind of fun. Like that. And then I want to go in with my angle brush, using it on its side, and just create some of these little tendrils coming out. Okay. So that had a little too much water. So all I want to do is just dab on my sheet here. Just like that. Okay. So it creates these fun little spikies. I even noticed they had a few of them on the sides of, now I'm gonna feel like I have a little too much water, so I'm just gonna tap. Felt like there was even some of these little spiky things on the edges of this little um, stem coming out here. So I'm adding those in as well. So I'm gonna leave this alone. I kind of like the way that's looking. If you wanted to get into some detail, you could take the tip of your brush and just very lightly add in here, like something like this, okay? Just adds in a little bit of that detail. Now, as far as the leaves on these, they're quite interesting. Um, they're like, you know, regular kind of longer leaf, but um, they have these spiky edges. Now, what I'm gonna do here too, I think I'm gonna go in there with my round brush and I'm going to add in some little tendrils. So I'm just gonna lengthen these a little bit because I noticed I didn't pick any because I they were so pretty, I didn't wanna pick them. But I noticed they did have these little sepals coming off of them. These always remind me um, of uh, Winnie the Pooh, the little donkey. I think his name, he's called Donkey. I. I always have fun memories of Winnie the Pooh with my kids, so I, that's always fun too. Now let's go into the the uh, leaf, and I'm going to use the point and flatten out, pushing in. Now I need a little bit more water. See how dry that was? So point, light pressure, more pressure, more pressure, more pressure. And I noticed the ones I saw kind of did this type of thing. I also noticed, and I could use my eight round, but I think I'm gonna use this because it's a perfect shape and go into that green and create those little uh, jaggedy edges. Okay, so very easy with this brush. Make, make those a little thicker, something like that. Now I feel like I want to, I need some more color in that. So I think I'm going to bring in a little bit of the color just to create some cohesiveness with the flower. I always like adding, um, some of the color of the flower into the leaves. I think that's really kind of interesting and, and fun. So let's just take a little bit of that green and mix it with some of that Quin Magenta. And I'm going to wet into wet. Just tap in here and there. Something like that. I think that's real interesting when I use the color of the flower. And I've noticed a lot of these flowers I see 
they have a lot of this pinkish color in the tips of the leaves, which I, I kind of like. So let's create another leaf over here. Go into our green. There we go. And let's just create another leaf over here. So again, I noticed they were somewhat like an arch. So point, press, arch it, draw up, draw up, and come down like that. Okay, now I really like how it was lighter here because it looks like the sun's shining down on there. So I'm not gonna touch that too much. I might go in with a little bit of that Quinn Magenta. Just tap in here and there. Let that kind of do its thing. And then I'm going to go along with the edges and create those little spiky things. Okay, something like that. I think that's really fun. Okay, so I really like that. Um, I might just add in, let's see, do we need anything more? I think I'll take a lighter value because all of this feels a little bit like the same value, although I do have lighter values here and here. Um, I have a little bit lighter value here, but let's really get a light value and make it look like there's a leaf in the background back in here. The way I'm going to achieve that is just use my green, but I'm gonna make it quite watery, so more water than paint, and I get this very light hue. And then let's just add in our water, our leaf in the background here. So up, press, kind of coming behind this one. There we go. I think that's really nice. See how that really goes into the background there? I might add those little sharpie things but i'm not going to do too much more with that because i really like that i've got my composition my rule of thirds here and look at how quick we did that we did that rather quickly this would be another really beautiful card i don't have one of those cards in front of me but i buy these little cards on amazon and they're the papers actually surprisingly good and um they're really fun. You could paint something like this if you're good at calligraphy, which I'm not. Um, it would be a really pretty little um, card to send to somebody. Um, so anyways, what I might even add to this, I used to be known for using um, kind of some uh, splatters. I think this is beautiful just like this, but let's play with some splatters here. It can sometimes just create some more interest. So I wet my brush, dipped it into the purple, and it's quite, um, it's quite wet. And then I'm just going to rest my finger here, and I'm just going to do a little bit of splattering. So I'm tapping onto this, just like that. Okay, and I think that's kind of fun. It, it brings a little bit of interest. There you go. The color I didn't really add in here, which I typically do when I do thistles, is um, that Prussian blue, which I really didn't use this time. Um, but that, that looks really pretty in these leaves as well. Something like that. Maybe just dab in here and there. Be careful with that Prussian blue. It can be pretty strong color. So you do have to be careful with it. Maybe just tap it in here and there. I think that's pretty. Something like that. 
So I don't want to get too overworking here. I really like the softness of this, um, the colors. And I hope you have fun with this. I think this was an easy little uh, tutorial. It's fun to use this brush because it has um, some natural abilities to it. Another flower I love doing with the angle brush is um, carnations. I think it does really well with carnations. These are almost a little bit of a carnation type look. Um, so maybe we'll do that that uh, tutorial another time. But go ahead and go in. Remember your rules of thirds for composition having some of these go out this way. So I've kind of got this S uh, composition uh, concept or principle in here, coming in here, here, going over this way. Um, I've got all of my flowers kind of angled different directions. I like that. And then playing with your values here. So this leaf in the background, I used more water versus pigment to kind of get uh, this feeling of in the background. And then these were more paint uh, versus water. And these two leaves look a little more up front in the foreground. Okay, if you wanna add these fun little splatters, uh, they're always fun to add to florals, um, especially if you wanna give it that feeling of um, some detail. And I think that's it. Have fun with this. And uh, I will link the supplies that I used in the bottom. And I will also put the kit together, which will include a little swatch, uh, the original painting, which is five and a half by eight and some of the strokes I use. So I will give you some strokes that you can warm up with before you go into the painting. And then you can come back to this tutorial and look at this up close, kind of see what I did, and then try and follow the tutorial. So have fun, guys. I will see you soon. Thank you so much for being here as I am learning every day on YouTube. I've only been here a few months and really grateful to your requests and kind words. And um, I'm really having a lot of fun. So thank you. We'll see you soon, friends.